This is our final video in our five part series overviewing data structures. In this video, we take a look at hash tables. The goal with a hash table is to immediately find an item in a sorted or unsorted list without the need to compare other items in the data set. Programming languages use hash tables to implement a dictionary data structure. A hashing function is used to calculate the position of an item in a hash table. The hashing function is applied to an item to determine a hash value, its position in a hash table. Now there are many different hashing functions in use today. A simple example for the age of this video could be to add up the ASCII values of all the characters in a string and calculating the modulus of that value by the size of the hash table. So assuming here a table size of 10, with Florida, F's deanery ASCII value would be 70, followed by 108, 111, 114, 105, 197. When we add all those together, we get 705, Performing modulus 10 gives us 5. So this hashing function would give us a hash value or a position in the hash table of 5. And that's where we store Florida. A hash table needs to be at least large enough to store all the data items, but is usually significantly larger to minimize the chance of the algorithm returning the same value for more than one item. Now this is known as a collision. So here we've used the same hashing function to calculate the hash value for Delaware. Adding all the ASCII values for the cat and Delaware together, we get 805. Performing modulus 10 gives us five. Since two data items cannot occupy the same position in the hash table, a collision has occurred. A good hashing function should be calculated quickly, aim to result in as few collisions as possible, and use as little memory as possible. Now there are many strategies for resolving collisions generated from hashing functions. A simple solution is to repeatedly check the next available space in the hash table until an empty position is found and store the item there. This is known as open addressing. To find the item later, the hashing function delivers the start position from which a linear search can then be applied until the item is found. This is known as linear probing. In this example, we can see that Delaware has a hash value of 5, but that address is already occupied by Florida. Therefore, Delaware is placed at 6, the next available position. When we get round to California, we discover it has a hash value of 6 but again cannot occupy its intended position. So it must be stored in the next available position, seven. Now a disadvantage of linear probing in this way is that it prevents other items from being stored in their correct location in the hash table. It can also result in what is known as clustering, several positions being filled around common collision values. Notice that with a table size of 10, we get two collisions. With a table size of five, three collisions occur, resulting in a less efficient algorithm, but a reduced memory footprint. If the table size was to increase to 11, we'd have no collisions with this example. With hashing algorithms, there's often a trade-off between the efficiency of the algorithm and the size of the hash table. The process of finding an alternative position for items in the hash table is known as rehashing. An alternative method of handling collisions is to use a two-dimensional hash table. It is then possible for more than one item to be placed at the same position, known as chaining. Here we see that both Florida and Delaware can occupy the same position, but in different elements of our 2D array. Another possibility would be to use a second table for collisions, known as an overflow table, which can then be searched sequentially. You could also use a linked list to maintain your overflow. Again, search sequentially. Hash tables can be used in situations where items in a large data set need to be found quickly. Typical uses include file systems, linking a file name to the file path. 
identifying the keywords in a particular programming language during compilation. You need to be able to understand three basic operations which can be performed on a hash table, adding a value, deleting a value and retrieving a value. And we look at these in more detail in our next video on hash tables. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How do hash tables work? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, and finally, we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB, so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves.